Hi, welcome to the next channel. So last night I was uh, having a session um, uh, with uh, uh, a student uh, uh, and uh, even I was uh, kind of working on a client project uh, somewhat uh, related to you know bonding and uh, stuff and uh, when it uh, uh, came to the you know uh, session uh, we had a chat and uh, uh, he got uh, confused about uh, about uh, you know TCP multipath and TCP link bonding and uh, stuff like that and because uh, he was uh, thinking in which layer it happens and as well as uh, he was kind of confused uh, about the overall uh, terminology so I had a discussion and uh, some uh, 10 days ago I even uh, got uh, a new uh, student who just uh, ping me about uh, doing some research in uh, you know a topic like this uh, which is when I thought uh, let me do a quick video so that it is exciting and also I can touch upon this both concepts uh, how they differ see uh, there is uh, this uh, link bonding and uh, you can uh, uh, you know share the load of your uh, TCP data uh, via the link bonding the link bonding can uh, happen in uh, multiple ways and it is mostly layer 2 concept like you have this lack P and uh, stuff so the link bonding happens in the layer 2 context uh, uh, the kernel uh, when you set the link bonding in Linux you can do quite easily with even existing UI uh, whatever Ubuntu gives so for instance if you wanted to do in Linux you can uh, go here and you can go to edit connections see you can see here my wireless uh, uh, sorry wired connection is over here and uh, as you add any uh, network uh, interface cards or NIC cards say for instance uh, I can just add this uh, you know USB NIC card uh, of mine okay so let's add one more uh, you know interface sometimes it can be motherboards or PCIe card whatever it is you can add additional NIC cards right so you can add additional Ethernet cards and you can see there it shows as it is disabled and after you do that uh, assume uh, you have connected that as well to this uh, you know switch uh, you can see there there are two wired connections are there and you can go to the settings uh, uh, like this you can click add and then you can see here uh, there are various options so then you can choose uh, bonding and you can see here you have this uh, bond and since it's a sort of you know virtualized aspect of you know Linux kernel you just need to create a bond and you need to add you know uh, these ports to that bond okay you can do it in CLI you can do in uh, UI doesn't matter in Linux kernel it maintains all these things nothing happens in the user space as usual okay although you do with this interface so you create this and you can see here it provides all these options so the type and what is the mode you want to do whether you want to do packets with round robin or adaptive transmit load balancing or you need to do some kind of um, adaptive load balancing or you need to use standard LACP protocol like this 802.3 AD and uh, stuff so this is what uh, happens behind the scenes so each variant has its own uh, advantages and uh, you know the way it works and stuff and you can do that and you can do after that you can just add you know interfaces over here okay so this way you create a bonding I have done in the past in the you know uh, Linux PC I thought uh, I can uh, uh, you know add one more uh, uh, Ethernet uh, uh, cable and then I can bond it uh, so that uh, I can have a bonded uh, you know NAS servers uh, as well as uh, you know bonded PC so that I can improve the bandwidth so the problem with that approach is uh, there is a lot of uh, disk IO uh, uh, you know uh, bound delay or latency rather than any network latency so I just uh, uh, stop that approach and uh, I think I still retained bonding in my you know NAS server so let me do a cancel of this and we can check what it is configured so this way when you do bonding it is what it is called as TCP link bonding and not to be confused with multi homing okay so you do this uh, let's just boot into this NAT server yeah you can go to this network tab see this is my netgear nas i can do this in the free nas as well okay i can do the same thing with the free nas as well but unfortunately there are no additional uh, you know pci ports so i can't plug my available vacant uh, you know gigabit NIC card interface 
to that so i am just using one uh, you know ethernet interface which is the motherboard inbuilt nic card i can't uh, plug any additional nic card interfaces because i have several host bus adapters uh, to connect additional hard drives yeah you can see here it is uh, bonded and uh, this way you can see here i have set as active backup and stuff so which means it is not going to do any load sharing of packets in both the interfaces so if one interface is down or if uh, the cable is loose or any loose contacts or something like that uh, you know any important operation when you copy files uh, to the nas server or download files from the nas server will not be you know uh, disrupted and um, it's quite important for any you know server like situation so here we are using not in an intent to share the load or that uh, you know traffic here the intent is to have a backup uh, uh, you know uh, a redundancy sort of an uh, option that way if you understand uh, essentially in uh, uh, the kernel uh, architecturally what happens is uh, the kernel uh, does this uh, bonding operation uh, let's ignore the mode or whatever you configure just uh, we have a look at a high level you know point of view so you have this uh, linux kernel and we have the upper layer uh, subsystems uh, let's assume this is your sockets and then uh, you have followed by which you have other uh, network you know subsystems uh, right and after that you have the drivers uh, uh, for those uh, network interface cards for those nic cards you may have multiple you know driver instances if you have three ports you have three driver instances so let's assume it there is a driver instance for each port right you can have it for eth0 and then eth1 and eth2 so you have multiple driver instances when you establish uh, some type of a bonding uh, what happens is you have a bonded interface so this will be some bond zero let's you know uh, you know create this illusionary interface called bonded interface and whatever it has been configured it will be attached to this interface and this is what exposed to the upper layer so so when you create any uh, you know data transfers it happens through this bonded interface not to this you know interface so in in fact it is quite uh, fortunate this netgear server is a uh, uh, Linux based server so you can do SSH and you can do certain investigation in the server itself okay so SSH root it uh, hyphen NAS yes uh, you can see there you can do some operations so you name minus r and you can provide uh, you can you can get uh, the kernel uh, uh, stuff and uh, ls cpu hopefully it should work and as well you can do if config and you should see there you have this uh, bonded interface see there uh, it has this bonded interface and the ip address is set for this versus these two interfaces are uh, bound to that bonded interface so which is why what happens is like i said architecturally you are not going to set any ip address to the ethernet interfaces instead it will be set to the bonded interface so in this case it is set as 192.168.0.99 uh, the server address okay so when you do any uh, socket operations uh, whenever it listens for any packets uh, and uh, when i connect from my pc to the server it is happening to this interface this virtual interface and of course to manage that uh, you need uh, some virtual driver and it will uh, you know do that stuff internally so that whenever packet comes how it should manage those packets and uh, you know uh, uh like you see in that uh, round robin basis or whatever it is or in this case it is just an active backup which means uh, if something fails uh, then other thing will get uh, you know will be taken over so something like that so that's what it happens so this is what it happens so when you uh, think about uh, tcp link bonding okay let's come to the subject tcp link bonding so what is essentially happening is let's assume if it is configured as a round robin uh, mode okay let's uh, you know mark it as a mode round robin so uh, essentially what happens is any packets are sent it will be sent to that uh, 
you know uh, virtual interface and the virtual interface is going to split that load let me mark it with a different color see i uh, use this uh, you know uh, as a whiteboard uh, and that is why i'm not doing any more videos with the whiteboard and even if i have sessions with my students uh, uh, typically most of them are uh, sometimes maybe from abroad or sometimes we do have sessions at my time at uh, 1 am in the midnight and stuff sometimes they are from us or canada or stuff like that okay so it kind of helps i do have a skype sessions or google hangouts and this way it kind of you know makes it possible otherwise uh, even in bangalore some student hesitates uh, to come to my home because it is quite you know far and uh, you know stuff so it's quite easy uh, i can just use this color coded stuff so that it is quite easy to follow so so let get back to the subject so when it sends packets so naturally what happens is it is going to share uh, to this port and then the other packet it is going to share uh, to this port and uh, you know it can flip flop uh, between these two ports when it is set as something like round robin so both the ports are active and at the same time uh, both the ports can handle uh, you know the extra bandwidth so combined uh, you get uh, if uh, one port is uh, one uh, gigabit per second you will be getting a total bandwidth of 2 gbps uh, you know kind of a situation over here provided uh, the system also should be capable in my situation uh, this nas server is a very low power uh, arm uh, sorry not arm uh, i think it is arm processor not mips yeah it's a very low power uh, arm processor i have even benchmarked this server over here in my true bench benchmark so so if you come down here this is where this stands versus this is raspberry pi 2 and this is raspberry pi 3 so you can just see it is uh, it's almost uh, uh, half the performance of raspberry pi 2 and uh, uh, when you compare uh, pi 2 with pi 3 pi 3 is uh, you know almost double the performance of raspberry pi 2 and uh, from there you can just imagine what is its true capability so you can't fire the traffic at 2 gbps even if you swap this uh, disk hard drives with ssds and stuff it is quite not possible because such bandwidth to handle you need a very good uh, you know system as well with adequate ram okay i'm not sure how much memory it has uh, free minus h uh, yeah you can see there it has Uh, around a half a gb or something like that and it is using some swap space so i mean it's not currently using but it is set to use swap space so this is the overall situation so it's a kind of pretty much a low config system compared to my you know uh, this uh, diy built uh, free nas uh, it's quite a, a good server it has around 8 gb of ram with uh, uh, an excellent uh, ryzen processor for nas like uh, stuff it is more than adequate okay so there you can do something and there you can fire up uh, up to 2 gbps or even you can bond some more interfaces and you can increase the bandwidth provided you also change the disks to you know ssd so that it can handle such a load so that's what essentially happens it it this uh, you know tcp link bonding nothing happens in the tcp level uh, there will be no change over here it is just going to happen in the lower sub system so where this uh, bonding driver is doing it is doing all this magic it is just uh, you know getting that and it is splitting across multiple uh, interfaces okay sometimes experimentally you can also write some type of a character driver and uh, provide uh, with the network uh, you know driver uh, data structures like net device and you can register your character driver as a virtual uh, network interface and you can play around you can also do something like that by yourself so this is what it happens so that's what it happens uh, so there is no where tcp is aware of this uh, you know situation even if you have enabled uh, bonding with round robin and stuff you can uh, do that and you can do some tcp tests before how it is performing and after how it is performing you can do such things but technically nothing happens in the tcp level so that is what um, there is nowhere uh, you can tell that uh, this is anywhere uh, you know tcp aware uh, stuff so this is one mode it can happen the other one is the uh, you know uh, you have a you know standards you have uh, a proper implementation which is called as uh, uh, you know mptcp 